Chris uh, comes from the Quincy area of Massachusetts, uh, was born not far away in Needham, and states that his family environment embraced and nourished art and artisanship for he and his family. With a smattering of musicians, painters, dancers, actors, potters, doll makers, seamstresses, and French chefs in it. <laughs> By the time he was 15, he was playing in a surf band and two years later, part of a folk quartet known as the Town Dump. <laughs> Uh, with a repertoire that drew on Bob Dylan and Gordon Lightfoot, Lightfoot and others, which he continues to perform some of those cover songs today. And he took a break uh, after getting involved in band work to raise a family and pursue a career as media specialist at UMass Boston. And then back again, he goes in the 1990s and started hitting the coffee house circuit with his warm bass baritone voice and acoustic guitar. He has written songs of his own, and he has also collaborated with well-known Boston poet Bill Thibodeau. And Chris also uh, often shares cover songs of other singer-songwriters. And Chris notes that he sees himself as an interpreter, in a way, uh, in helping to maintain the legacy of other folks who are songwriters like Fred Neal and Stan Rogers. And more recently, contemporary writers such as Tom Russell, David Olney, and Garnet Rogers. And he brings his songs, his original, and he weaves in with the songs of other local artists and sometimes from a bit beyond as well. And uh, and mesmerizes with his way of interpreting and delivering uh, in coffee houses, clubs, and festivals across New England. And in 2018, he, Chris was invited to perform at the festivals in Switzerland. Um, and Chris notes, when asking about a memorable moment, visiting an old friend of his recently, very recently, uh, so not at a, a large concert type of event, but in a very close-up way, sharing folk music and a meal uh, with his dear friend at a nursing home. And uh, just the importance of being together and sharing music and the importance that that can do for one another in getting together to share the words of songs. And he has a CD, and it is titled Red Sky and Morning here today. He is to share the songs of his choice, of others, perhaps of himself, perhaps of poet. Please welcome Chris Payhood. Robbie went down to the fishing hole. Stony Brook water was icy cold. With a pole in his hand and nothing on his feet. He was Rocky Road, dancing in the high summer heat. Green Rocky Road, promenading green. Robbie and I hike up Farmer Woods Hill. Lock, stock, and barrel, yonder fox standing still. All I had was a flash in a pan. Up and over that ridge the old fox ran Man, how I love those days Little old cabin in a smoldering haze Bright blue sky, a little bit of rain Sailing on the summer breeze again Robbie and I hiked up one farmer woods hill. Lock, stock, and barrel, yonder fox standing still. All I had was a flash in the pan. Up and over that ridge the old fox ran. 
And how I love those days A little log cabin in a small room haze Bright blue sky, a little bit of rain Sailing on the summer breeze again Early one morning we were holding hands To young enough for certain but it seemed to be Looking in her eyes made me weak in the knees Who do you love? Who do you love? Robbie had a hawk and he named it Horace Found it down by the edge of the forest we all loved that falcon he had found Grew up following us kids around And how I love those days A little log cabin and a smoldering haze Bright blue sky and little bit of rain Robbie had a hawk and he named it Horace I found it down by the edge of the forest We all loved that falcon he had found She grew up following us kids around Damn how I love those days a Little old cabin in the swollen hay Sky, a little bit of rain Sailing on the summer breeze again Up one afternoon came a magazine man Photographer too and a storyline plan About a boy and a bird and a special bond but she winged away the morning, yes, she was gone Well, the next time we saw about a year from then High in the sky, coming in She had a little brood falling close behind We all couldn't keep from crying Then how I love those days Cabin in a smoldering haze. Bright blue sky, a little bit of rain. Sailing on the summer breeze again. Robbie had a radio, the signal was weak. So we wired the antenna to the top of a peak. Of a tall pine tree under feet up the hill. A major improvement, a rock and roll thrill. Then came lightning, thunder, and rain. Storm rolled in, rocked out again. Well, I didn't know enough to ground that line. Radio exploded, the sparks went flying. How I love those days Little old cabin in a smoldering haze Bright blue sky, a little bit of rain Sailing on the summer breeze again Oh.
thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I met uh, a family named the Andersons. Robbie was my buddy back when we were only like eight or nine years old. They had, uh, they had come from the Orlando area, kind of fled uh, Disneyland and, and wound up in Vermont, a family of seven kids. Their dad was a, uh, was a fine arts painter and a very unconventional family. So, uh, and I just saw three of them uh, just a couple of days ago, including Robbie. So uh, it was a big part of my life. You're very kind. I repeated a few verses. It's still early in the morning. <laughs> um, let's see. Next, I'm going to switch over, and uh, yes, I did, I did grow up in Needham, but I, I live in Quincy, um, and I'm a member of the Quincy Historical Society. Let's just take a quick check here, make sure that the guitar has finally acclimated itself to the, uh, oh, maybe not quite, to the environment here. From it, it is cold outside, and thank you all for coming instead of... Uh, uh, doing panic shopping at the moment. Um, Quincy was uh, one of the early settlements uh, in, in New England and Massachusetts, and uh, one of the first settlers was a fellow named Thomas Morton, who in, uh, is famous or infamous for his uh, the Maypole that he put up in uh, May 1st. Uh, it was May 1st, 1627, that, that ultimately got him in trouble with... Uh, um, Governor Bradford and the Pilgrims and got him thrown out. Uh, he was actually thrown out more than once, but uh, on that day, for that occasion, he and uh, his uh, happy uh, companions uh, wrote a song for that day. Of course, we don't know what the melody was, but we did have the lyrics. And um, uh, I'm going to sing just a few of the, the verses, not everything, because it, it's, a, it's a drinking song. It's a dancing and drinking song, actually. But um, uh, it's one of the earliest songs, as far as we can tell, that, that uh, was written in, in the New World in the English language and, and was sort of an infomercial for, uh, uh, for Massachusetts, if you can believe it. Uh, um, yeah, it wasn't, you know, this horrible poor soil and let's move west yet. It was, uh, you know, come on over and let's have a great time. So anyway, uh, and when you get to write the first song, uh, you get to call it whatever you want. So he named it the song. And um, <laughs> so here goes. Drink and be merry, merry, merry boys. And all your delight be in Hyman's joys. I owe to Hyman, now the day has come. About the merry, merry. Scotch overworn, less 
horses and me or what's gone away. He shall be welcome to us night and day. Then drink and be merry, merry, merry boys. All your delight be in Hyman's joys. I owe to Hyman how the day has come. About the merry maple, take a room. About the merry <laughs> oh, he was a scallywag. He got in real trouble for that. Um, he, uh, his mistake was probably inviting some pilgrims to come to the party. But um, he, the main one of the, his main uh, complaints they had against him uh, was that first off, he wasn't a Puritan, and uh, he ran a very successful trading post. Uh, he offered freedom to all indentured servants who uh, decided to leave Plymouth if they wanted and come work with him up at Merrimount. That's the part of Quincy that uh, he was talking about. And uh, he gave them a share in the business. So, uh, And they, they brewed their own beer. They had, uh, you know, they were very uh, ecologically mined. They reused their bottles and... Uh, Anyway, so, um, yeah, so Miles Standish did, did, did bust him with the pilgrims, and they, they arrested him, sent him, uh, I think, out to the Isle of Shoals for a while, and then eventually he was shipped back to England uh, where he was acquitted in court and, uh, and it was, it was actually um, uh, one of the edicts was that the pilgrims had to accept him back. And so he came back uh, to, uh, to Merrimount, and uh, this song is uh, written sort of from the perspective of his first return, because indeed he got busted again and sent out again, and he came back again. So um, uh, I've got a good friend uh, who I played music with since uh, childhood, and, and really for me, most of my music really kind of uh, was based in, in that area with friends that I grew up with and friends that I still see from time to time. Even at Christmas time, I play with my brother and a bunch of other guys that I've known since God knows when, since high school and junior high school. But this is uh, written by my buddy Jim Ryan, who uh, I walk, actually, the beach um, most mornings. I've been doing this with Jim for oh, over 30 years, and we, uh, we do walk right at the base of the old settlement. So... Um, one day we were wondering about, you know, what was part of the story, and um, uh, I wrote to a, a history professor at Quincy High School, and he sent me a letter, and uh, I gave the letter. This was about Thomas Morton. We were wondering about Thomas Morton, and um, uh, Jim came up with a song, and the song is called Morton's Return. Well, I'll tarry no longer, to Merrimount I shall go, and I'll drink whenever I want to. Dance around the pole While women will attend me In the company of friends Tell them old Tommy Morton's come To Merrimount again Well then Quite soon we were befriended By a host of Algonquin We could hunt and trap and fish but they were not business men, yet they treated them with the matters of our trade. Sure as night follows day, it seemed our fortunes were made. So I'll tarry no longer, to Merrimount I shall go, and I'll drink whenever I want to, and dance around the pole. Wild women will attend us in the company of Tell them old Tommy Morton's come to Merrimount again. Well, to revel in our fortune, a maple we did raise. And with our native brothers, we danced and sang God's praise. And with our native sisters, we often did lie down. Till the laughter of our revels was heard in Plymouth Town. Soon word came back from Plymouth that a couple
company of men was marching up towards Paramount, a rowdiness to end. We passed a jug among us, the fight them was our plan. But when they got to Paramount, we were too drunk to stand. So there ain't no longer to Paramount I shall go, and I'll drink whenever I Set sail for England, heavy charges laid on me. Yet no jury would convict me, they freed me from my chains. And I vowed that I would soon return to Paramount again. So we land in the morning, we'll come in with the tide. For my beloved Paramount, I cross the whole world wide. It seems what I call pleasure, other men mistake for vice, and what others call New England to me is paradise. So I'll tarry no longer, and the remount I shall go, and I'll drink whenever I want to, and dance around the pole. Wild women will attend me in the company of friends, tell them what Thank you. Oh, 10 minutes? Okay. 10. Okay. Thank you, Cheryl. All right. Um, well, thank you. You've been very nice. Um, let's see. Um, I also, as, as mentioned, I do have done a little bit of work with uh, a modern day fellow who lives in Quincy, Bill Thibodeau, some of you know. And. Uh, And Bill uh, is a founding member of the Carpenter Poets. And that's, uh, Bill's got a website, BillThibodeau.com. That's T-H-I-B-O-D-E-A-U. And he's got a few poetry books out. Uh, his latest one is, the, is uh, called The Four River. And, whoops, uh, which is, was where shipbuilding had been going on in Quincy. Excuse me, from the Capo. Shipbuilding had been going on in Quincy for, well, since the 1600s. And uh, Bill had, Bill's granddad had come down from, uh, uh, I think, uh, Quebec. His dad and worked at the shipyard. His dad worked at the shipyard. And after Bill got out of high school, Quincy High School, he was a welder at the shipyard as well. So um, I think Bill has, uh, has these books available on his website, BillTibodeau.com. Um, other poetry books of his are The Watchman and uh, American Icon. So, anyway, here's a song uh, that I put uh, one of Bill's poems to music. So, it's called, uh, uh, well, I call it Your Birthday. It's, it's, I think, believe the real title is Have I Missed Your Birthday Again? <laughs> I don't know where the miles have gone, where the hours have risen and lain. These beds of earth I've rested upon have been washed like sheets in summer rain. I pray for strength to wrestle the snow, the leaves of autumn colored my brain. As days turn to seasons, I need to know. Have I missed your birthday again? Did you pour yourself a tall glass of wine? Turn to the window and whisper a name. 
It'll be all right if it's all in my head. Have I missed your birthday again? You're warm and safe on your bed A hand to cling to as the darkness wanes But do you wonder why the moon turns red Why the wind sounds familiar Like a passing train See the glow of the vagrant's fire That warms my cup with its low blue flame Does your home fire heat match my world desire? Have I missed your birthday again? Did you pour yourself another glass of wine? Turn to the window and whisper a name. You've had your life to live and I've had mine. Have I missed? of a tall glass of wine Turn to the window and whisper a name You've had your life to live and I've had mine Have I missed your birth?